So what, what I wanted to do um, is to present a summary of the working groups because uh, it might not be self-evident. Right? There are a lot of people working with us on this and not just the, the biocaddy team at the um, four institutions that constitute the executive committee. And what I wanted to do is just a summary. Most of the information you will find online at biocaddy.org with the specific recommendations. I just wanted to go very quickly over the working groups, what they're doing, which ones have completed, which ones are ongoing, and uh, invite you to participate in this ongoing one and uh, the ones coming up next. We made, uh, in March of last year, a, a plan of 13 working groups and how they would be conducted. There were some adjustments uh, along the way, but uh, pretty much all the, the tasks are um, on schedule. And, and this is my uh, little slice of the box, the biocaddy. Uh, we do think out of the box, but in, in this particular illustration, we're all in there. Uh, with the groups that do the metadata ingestion, that do the mapping and indexing, and uh, use the terminology server to expand queries, so create the search engine that you will see in a few minutes that you're all waiting for. And then on, on the cylinder on the left-hand side is some, some of the stakeholders, the data sources, what comes inside, what kind of uh, demand and, uh, products come from the outside to be processed by uh, the BioCaddy team in, in order to process them, in, in order to select which metadata or which indexing strategies, there were working groups. And this, some of them are rather large because we have to accommodate a variety of um, communities into this. So just as a roadmap, and you will hear more about the data met and the indexing pipeline, uh, development team, which we'll, we're calling the core development team. Uh, we started in March 2015. In November was when we had our first all-hands meeting and uh, it shows here some of the accomplishments up to that point. The prototype, the data man, was not released yet and it was released in, in June. So we're kind of a little bit ahead of that now and we have already some very good initial feedback and we have made, made adjustments accordingly. But what I will uh, concentrate on uh, this afternoon is, is what will come next. We have a plan for the third year, the, the three year um, cooperative agreement and here are some items that will, are still in the pipeline. Uh, but there is also, you know, the, Hence my question to Ron before, what are we going to do uh, once we have um, done all this effort and, and what is our path ahead? And we will have that discussion over lunch and I will uh, summarize with also a, a vision of, of what we believe uh, we could do moving forward. So stay tuned for that. In this update here, Again, I'll, I'll bring back the main components of BioCaddy and I'll focus on the working groups now. Throughout the day you will hear about the other aspects of it. So working groups were defined so that we would gather uh, use cases, we would um, decide, we would have criteria to decide which uh, data we index immediately and we index ourselves. Uh, while we were also developing the uh, data tag suite or DAS uh, in order to create uh, a specification that data producers themselves could start indexing their data and submitting that way. But we have to do all this in parallel because we want to uh, get input from the community in, in the direction that we're going. In terms of um, We've already been asked about the APIs for what is indexed already, and we will we are developing those. We have developed the search engine that you will see the demo of, and 
we are working on this ecosystem in terms of the data citations, what are the incentives, links to publications, and so on. And obviously, we'll have to have an evaluation to, to go over what's working and what's not working. So the working groups were all uh, designed around those themes. And I will present them a little bit out of order. Uh, but uh, please keep in mind this figure that all elements of this uh, pentagon are being addressed by different working groups. So the working group number one, we named interactions with the BD2K centers, which has expanded to beyond the BD2K as well. And uh, our goal in our original plan was to interact with two to three centers. And uh, the way I am displaying here, and you will hear about the Count Everything Project on Secure F um, API for Count Query, we collaborated with three centers on those, the Translational Genomics Center from UC Santa Cruz and UC San Francisco, that is David Hausler and Laura Van Beer. Uh, the Picture Center out of Harvard with Zach Kohani and the uh, MD2K Center out of um, Memphis in UC San Francisco, so that's Sensor Kumar in Ida Tim. And why is it important for us to count? And Gautam will get that motivation later, but just want to emphasize that we want to provide value for those users who are searching for data. So let's imagine I'm searching for data on uh, Kawasaki disease on African American kids. Metadata will tell me this data set around here contain diagnosis, this data set around here contain ethnicity. It will not tell me that inside the data set we do have those kids that I'm searching for. So if an API can be done with those data sources and say count how many kids with Kawasaki disease you have inside that data, the database that has more of those kids will probably be more useful than the one that has fewer kids. So it is related to ranking. It is related to providing use to um, uh, providing value to the user. And Xiao Chen will talk more about the specifics of it because by doing that, we also need to uh, be absolutely sure we're not compromising the privacy of the individuals uh, who are in those data sets. Uh, another project that we've been working on is on breast cancer genomics and reproducibility by design. Those were also with the Translational Genomics Center out of Santa Cruz and San Francisco. And uh, those are related to actually hosting data and uh, thinking about the interaction uh, with those uh, who, who do want data hosting in, in particular uh, format. Uh, an upcoming one we're very excited about is with Links Coordinating Center, and this will be about visualization and ranking, so different ways to, to have a graphical user interface. On the right-hand side, I talk about other BD2K programs. So Ron talked about uh, already that there is a common fund that they have data set. We are very interested in collaborating um, on indexing. In there is an emerging working group on data object registry, which uh, I, I must say you should all be interested in because that's, that's um, a lot of uh, interesting things that we can create, very related to BioCaddy as well as other projects. Uh, join me this with the center's coordinating center today, so 3 p.m. onwards, you will see you know, how our projects have a lot in common. Uh, the cloud pilot, we plan to participate as well, and uh, I will also be doing a, a training webinar related to biocanning. So, so a lot going on here. Uh, the working group two is on identifiers, and, and actually, if you have questions in the middle, please do and, and ask them. Uh, otherwise, you'll forget by the time I get to working group thirteen. <coughs> so I'm just uh, warning you: there are lots of them. So the recommendations of the identifier group uh, are for us, BioCaddy, not to mint an identifier and rely on identifiers provided by the source. Uh, 
we would have to uh, have um, data sets referenced by the data discovery index uh, be resolved to the full um, URI for the data set. And uh, we should maintain a set of landing pages for each of the data set uh, index and maintain landing pages for um, data sets that may no longer exist. As you know, BioCaddy does not host the data themselves, but it points to the data. And at some point, uh, it will be pointing to something that doesn't exist anymore. We need to have that landing page. We need to have that record. So as you see, there were a lot of uh, group members. A lot of people contributed in uh, this uh, working group has been continued, so it is completed officially, but it has continued with uh, related projects. So there is one on data citation implementation, which you'll hear more about this afternoon. Um, and also another one with the uh, mini ID that uh, Jeff can talk a little bit about, but it's another collaboration with the other centers, which I should have. Uh, that in the, the first slide. So, so there's a, a lot going on here. So for those um, interested in identifiers, please connect with Jeff, who chairs this um, working group. Um, the implementation pilot, again, you will hear more about when we talk about supplements. Uh, so I won't give you, uh, I won't be a spoiler. Uh, I will actually skip those slides in order to go to working group number three, very um, critical to our effort, which is chaired by Susanna from Oxford, and that's uh, descriptive metadata for data sets. So this is where the various versions of that uh, came up, and as Ron said, we're in 2.1 right now, uh, which was a result of getting feedback from a variety of um, stakeholders, including a workshop that we had uh, in uh, La Jolla at UC San Diego in, in June of this year. So that was very interesting. The repository uh, uh, representatives came and gave a lot of feedback on what needed to be done. That was done. And also, uh, mapping to schema.org is underway. So very important to mention that. There were two approaches to, to coming up with the specifications. One was the top down from the use cases, and the other one was the bottom up from uh, what we know is already um, existing in terms of method data. So the, uh, in the middle, we uh, came up with the DEX format. Uh, the representation, there were 36 members from 21 institutions, so that's uh, representative of the inclusiveness that this group has um, always emphasized. And it's also in other groups, you will see representation <coughs> of different institutions. Uh, it's an ongoing working group, so those interested can still, you know, connect with Susanna and uh, get to know more <coughs> about that and uh, contribute to it. Working group four was use cases and testing benchmarks and uh, was gathered uh, inform information from uh, BioCaddy use cases and developed usability specifications. There's a report there you can go through all the details about it, but you see how important it is to pair this up with an actual implementation that we can get feedback from, because otherwise we, we just get opinions in a vacuum. So for us, very important to have the prototype. Uh, these are details that I will not get into now, but, but who I will present some more, uh, who and collaborators will present uh, some more details about it. Uh, in terms of data citation metrics, Susanna and Jeff uh, chaired this committee, uh, which was to get uh, qualitative and quantitative metrics. Uh, that we would uh, follow. So what uh, is in the italics in the second bullet is uh, an example of metrics that came up, and you can also consult, consult the website for more, but the date, uh, so how recent the data sets are, where they come from, uh, have they been cited, have they been downloaded, 
are they uh, sufficiently curated? So some of the metrics are similar to article metrics, right? Downloads and citations, very common to measure popularity or measure usefulness of the literature uh, with that. But some others are, are different because data are different and uh, the curation aspect of it is very important. So I would equate that if it were to the literature, it's um, essentially what, what the journals do. Make sure that the articles are well formed and in, in context and in, in, in format. And um, that's the same thing as we need to do for data. And it's not an easy um, task. So there are data metrics projects uh, that, again, if you want more details, please contact the, the chairs. Uh, we are trying to align all our metrics with those of uh, existing projects, so we don't need to reinvent a whole lot of stuff going on if we don't confuse people. Uh, in interactions with other pilot projects that we conducted. So um, that was the working group five. Working group six, I'm very proud of our acronym, always been, is the crisis working. So when we had the crisis call, we were always in this mode, we, we need to resolve this, we, we are at an inflection point here, we need to determine what we are able to um, uh, do right now for inclusion in the prototype. So don't, don't get me wrong that whatever wasn't included or isn't in, in the queue for being included will not be. It's just that we, as I mentioned, instead of waiting for people to submit data in the correct format, we actually had to go and search for uh, repositories that we wanted to include and we wanted to index. And uh, again, this group had representation of um, several institutions in of the NIH, and our executive summary is online. And the items, the five items that we came up with, the prominence, uh, it's important. You know, it's important for NIH, it's important for the users. Uh, is it sustained? Will this um, repository continue or this data set continue to exist? Scope, we, at this phase, we wanted to experiment with a variety of data types. So being different was, was important as well. Quality, uh, sufficient metadata to make them indexable and access. They needed to be accessible to the scientific community. And that does not mean always to be public because there are several data sets that we uh, have access to if we um, order them. If we have a data user from an we have IRB approval. And, and those should be findable as well. You need to know they exist, and then you need to know the process by requesting them, which led to the working, working group seven, which was on access metadata. How do I access the data set? And there are minimal specifications that will make it um, easier for the user to determine whether they want this data set or not. Authorization, do I need any permission? Do I need a data use agreement signed uh, can it be signed by an individual or usually it's by institutions, right? The way we know it for uh, protected health information, for example, uh, of limited data sets. Authentication, uh, do we need, what, what form of authentication does that data repository require? And, and then the access, remote access, remote service, how, how it's working. So this, uh, again, if you want to do a search and you don't want to deal with data use agreements, then you, you should be able to exclude those data sets from showing up. And in order to exclude those, you have to have metadata saying what those data sets um, <coughs> permissions are. And, and this is um, work that George Auger shared a chair on Working Group 7. Working group eight was on ranking search results, bring together experts to identify priorities for system users. There's a report online. In a nutshell, uh, the recommendation was to determine empirically 
which ranks an algorithm from the elastic search family is the best for us to focus on right now in, uh, based on evaluations against reference sets and lots of user behavior. So again, the reference sets and benchmarking sets were created as part of another working group. And uh, the recommendation is we should provide alternative rankings. Uh, again, as, as you are all users of search engines, it's very important to be able to search by what's new, by what's relevant, <coughs> popular, uh, your preferences and so on. So we should have a means to incorporate that in our prototype search engine. And user evaluation criteria is uh, ongoing working groups that are engaging with users um, and evaluating the data net prototype. Uh, so a small group uh, right now uh, with a expansion date of November, so plenty of time for those who want to participate to, to uh, give their feedback, use data bank and see what's missing, what if it's not working well, and contribute to this effort. Uh, working group 10 was subsumed in the crisis working group, so that's the uh, skipped it here in the list. And the working group 11 was a rep repository contact workflow. So what is the front door, or, or, or what, what is the side door um, that repositories should use in order to get indexed uh, by data map? And currently, it, it's about filling a form and having our team contact the technical team of the repository and work on uh, together indexing with the DAX format in the future it would be that that format is out there, it's well understood, we have <coughs> taken all the, the, the bugs or the doubts out and people could submit uh, by reading their specification. That will take some time, but it's the final goal. So there is a process now and uh, we, we have that uh, ongoing already. Uh, I put my estimates of how, how um, completed it and so it's just in the beginning of having that process. Uh, and the last one is the NLP pilot, that's the natural language proxy pilot that we plan to integrate into the uh, prototype, into the data map. And instead of uh, issuing pilots up front, our decision was to go with a challenge. So there is a challenge out there, a, a with a cash prize, perhaps, and also a prize that you will be the pilot if you are one of the winners of those challenges. We know already what your thinking is, we know what you accomplished with the benchmarking data set. And there is a committee to review and, and rank and decide the winners. Uh, but once the winners are issued, then uh, what our plan is, is to um, consider them our pilot. And our pilot program is such that we, we fund those projects that um, contribute to our development, to our prototype, and produce software, produce work that will be coupled into the prototype. So those were the, essentially the, the working groups that I had to display to you. Again, more than, um, Perhaps 100 people now, and more than 40 institutions participated in various working groups. Some participated more aggressively, some participated more by listening and getting updated on what was going on. Um, but the important thing is that we try to uh, engage as many uh, people from the community as we could <coughs> at this point, and it's still ongoing. We issued recommendations, but again, those were preliminary ones. And we want you to keep getting this feedback in many different aspects. So with that, I, I think in terms of presentation, that's what I, I had to present.